So Ethereum has four times as many developers than any other cryptocurrency ecosystem out there. That is a surprisingly that any other blockchain platform is gonna have to cross if they're gonna compete with Ethereum. And we can see this gap getting even bigger over the coming years. So if you're already an Ethereum developer, that's really good news for you. And if you're not, you might wanna look at this Ethereum thing because it's kind of a big deal. So hey, if you're new around here, I'm Gregory from Dapp University. On this channel, I teach you how to build blockchain technology. And if you wanna become a blockchain developer, click the like button down below, click subscribe, and join my free training on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. Oh, and also before we jump into this, I know a lot of you watching these videos are not subscribed to the channel. I can see that in my YouTube analytics. So do me a favor right now, click that subscribe button. It really helps these videos get found so that more people can learn how to build blockchain technology. Ethereum has taken a huge portion of the blockchain developer market share. And I'm gonna bring up this article I'll put out by Consensus and I'm gonna give them full credit. I've even stolen their title and I'm gonna draw heavily on uh, that for this video. So I'm gonna put a link to that down in the description below if you wanna read the full report and I just wanna give credit where credit is due. So why is this so important? Well, if you want to become a blockchain developer, you're probably sitting back and thinking, you know, which blockchain do I want to build on? What do I want to learn? Because it's such a huge investment, right? If you're going to spend all this time and energy into learning something, you want that investment to pay off. And knowing something has, you know, four times more developers than another ecosystem is a pretty good indicator that that's a good thing for you to learn. So let's talk about the benefits of being inside of an ecosystem that has a lot of developers, right? The first thing I want to draw your attention to is this idea of a cyclical benefit. So here's what that looks like. Basically, developers create apps and those get users. And as those apps get more widely adopted, more users come into the space. And the more people come into space, the more demand there are to build new projects, which means there's more demand for blockchain developers. So essentially, this initial pool of developers that create something important you know, create all the opportunity for other developers that want to come on board. And the earlier you get on that trend, the more opportunity there actually is. It's sort of like buying, uh, you know, an, ass, an undervalued asset really early on. The upside is much bigger over time. But I always tell people who are technically inclined, who are looking at blockchain technology, that the best benefit for you over the long term is probably your technical skills, right? Investing in those rather than cryptocurrency, that's way more likely to give you a better return over the long run, especially if you're talking about having good cash flow for decades. And you might have seen the developers, developers, developers meme sort of floating around the internet. This has kind of become a joke on the internet, but it's true. It's really important to be behind a project where there's a lot of developers pushing their project forward. But like I said a minute ago, if you get in on a trend early, there's more upside for you the earlier you get in on that trend if you stick it out for the long term. You'll get over the learning curve first. You'll have skills before anyone else does. Uh, you'll have better skills by the time the herd comes in, right? You'll be able to differentiate your yourself from people who just learned this, you know, six months to a year ago. And the better you become over time, the more highly that you can be paid. I mean, development, uh, software development really is a meritocracy, right? It's sort of supply and demand economics. There's hardly any really good developers out there. And so those are the ones that command the highest incomes. Now I want to talk about another benefit of being where the developers are. You want to be in a place where there's actually resources for you as a blockchain developer. So let me explain that more. I don't know if you've ever, you know, tried to learn a new programming language or a library that hardly anyone uses. It's really frustrating. All the tools that you use are brittle and break whenever you try to do something. You can't always find a way to do it and you might be lost on Google trying to find the answer because the answers simply aren't out there. This might be a new programming language library, maybe a really old one that people don't use anymore or maybe just an obscure experiment that someone else has thought up and you've, you know, just tried to leverage for your own project, okay? This is maddening. And I know some of this uh, may even be true of the early days of blockchain development, like some of the tools uh, were hard to use initially, right? But they're getting better. And we can see that evidence all the time about teams like shipping new updates of tools and technologies. That's what you want to watch out for. Even if, you know, some things are still hard to use and you find yourself building things yourself, you want to find the projects that are shipping new versions of their tools all the time because that's going to be a good indicator that there's demand for it on the developer side. They're the ones building things. Um, and eventually that means you're going to have this lush developer ecosystem where you have resources. You can reach out to help from other developers who are building similar kinds of projects, You know, find answers to difficult problems uh, that you face whenever you're building blockchain technology. Another amazing thing about being in a developer 
developer ecosystem where there's a lot of developers like Ethereum is that it's very resistant to the slow times. And that's what I'm going to talk about right now. So 2018 and somewhat 2019 were kind of um, a slow year for crypto, right? We saw cryptocurrency prices decline like crazy. Lots of projects either folded or slowed down. A lot of people lost money. And it's not exactly what people expected going into 2018 after they saw this massive ICO boom in 2017, right? There's a lot of excitement that sort of died down. But despite all that, uh, Ethereum development still remains strong. So I want to show you some statistics on that. Uh, so this says, despite market downturns in 2018, full-time developers increased 13% year over year in June 2019 and are consolidating around high network projects. All right. So there was some loss in developers, but the developer loss came from uh, one time per month and part-time developers. So essentially that means people who just came in and tried this and then bounced and then left. So there was a loss, but there was still a gain, right? And there was actually a 19% net gain. So some of the biggest drop-offs were from uh, projects outside of the top 100. So essentially these really, these really small um, experimental projects, maybe ones that raised a lot of money, didn't have a platform yet. Those are the ones that saw the biggest loss, all right? But the really legitimate stuff, smart contracts, infrastructure, and decentralized finance ecosystems, these continue to grow full-time developers, right? These are the kinds of skills that I teach you on this channel. So that's really exciting that despite, you know, all this bearish trend that we've seen over 2018 and somewhat also into 2019, the crypto ecosystem from the developer side is still growing strong, right? And this talks about these overall crypto ecosystems are uh, approaching the size of some well-known projects, uh, open source projects like Apache, for example. And that's really good news for you as a developer if you can continue, you know, building inside of this space. And let's see what this potential could look like over the long term, all right? So I'll pull this up right here. So 6.8,000 is the estimated number of monthly active total blockchain developers right now here uh, in 2019, the time of recording this video. And watch what this trend could do over the next you know, four years. We could see that number 10X. So imagine if this is what people thought cryptocurrency would do based on historical performance, right? People will be jumping all over this. But this is the kind of growth potential that blockchain has. And compare that to other just major software development ecosystems like JavaScript or you know, mobile development. So Node.js has uh, 4 million uh, package manager users. And Android has 6 million developers, all right? So blockchain development has plenty of room to grow. But could this growth happen even faster, okay? So if you've been following along, uh, Joseph Lubin, the co-founder of Ethereum and CEO of Consensus, he gave a charge at DEF CON to try to bring 1 million developers into the Ethereum ecosystem. And he made that challenge to do it by the next DEF CON which is next year. So could we see a million Ethereum developers by 2020? Well, they released a tool at DevCon to help bring new developers into the ecosystem. This is 1milliondevs.com. This is a tool for training new Ethereum developers you should check out. Essentially, it onboards new users by giving them sort of aha moments and adventures, all right? And this is designed to sort of spread Ethereum mass adoption, especially among the developer community. So if you have friends that want to become Ethereum developers, this is a tool that they need to know about. You need to show them, walk them through, show them this video, show them my other videos, where I demo this project. So that'd be amazing if we had a million Ethereum developers next year. Now, it sounds like a steep goal, but I think it's a good thing to shoot for if we're trying to really grow this space and take advantage of that cyclical effect, which I talked about. The more developers come in, the more apps we can build, the more users come in, the more the demand is for developers, for blockchain technology in general. It's a win-win-win for everybody, right? I'm seeing these growth metrics on uh, my end. You know, I'm looking at charts like this, uh, the million Ethereum developers website. I'm seeing more and more people subscribe to my YouTube channel every month, uh, more people on my website, and also more people join my blockchain developer bootcamp, which you should you know, take advantage of if you want to become a blockchain developer. You can click the link down below at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. And all statistics aside, just think about what it would feel like riding this wave up to this 10x adoption curve uh, for blockchain developers, right? You'd be able to tell your friends, family, uh, you know, even your children one day that you were one of the first uh, blockchain developers ever in the world. And what kind of opportunities could that potentially yield for you, right? You might get a chance at cracking one of the really tough problems that people haven't solved with blockchain yet and help usher in one of these massive use cases that could bring in the herd, bring in the mass adoption. And you might even get a chance to join one of these unicorn startups that becomes a, a huge deal in blockchain, right? Or even just some other company that, you know, has a lot of growth over their entire career. There's a lot of opportunity for you as a developer to get in on that kind of thing early and sees massive benefits, right? 
you know, the possibility is endless, you know, especially if you want to become a freelancer, you could go ahead and start building your business now, build up all that reputation that you're going to need in order to sustain you across your freelancing career over time, right? Build your portfolio, build your client base. It's going to keep coming back to you, giving you referrals, all that kind of stuff. If you want to have, uh, you know, other freelancers work underneath you, you can start developing those relationships now, finding out who's really talented and how to really strategically grow your business over the long run. If you want to start a blockchain based business, maybe create a DAP that becomes a full-time business. You know, this is a really great time to do it. Think about all these other companies that started, uh, you know, after a big boom and then kind of in this uh, trench for a while before we saw a huge adoption. The, the big names, Amazon, Teslas, all these kinds of companies that did this, that really built uh, and were focused during sort of the times when the herd was not you know, focused on the space and then eventually the herd came and it was you know, really great for them to reap, reap that upside. Right? I'm doing a lot, a lot with this channel. right? I'm teaching you how to become a blockchain developer. Uh, right now, there's a lot of demand for blockchain developers but I see the demand getting bigger and bigger and bigger over time. That's one of the reasons I continue to make these YouTube videos every week to help you all, to help out this content, um, and you know, just to continue this cyclical effect because everyone helps one another. It's a win-win-win. It's a positive sum game over the long term. And being on a trend like this makes a huge difference. All right. So that's all I got for today, guys. I uh, hope you like this video. Again, subscribe to the channel because I know a lot of you watching are not subscribed. I see that in my YouTube metrics. So go ahead and do that. It really helps these videos get found. Uh, click the like button down below, turn on notifications. And as always, if you want to become a highly paid blockchain developer, you need to join my free training on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.